to talk uh, basketball talk pro uh, and my name is Ron Ecker. Uh, last time we talked about the Rovers own defense and it seemed like a lot of people uh, had some interest in that uh, and I, I, I will just urge you that uh, I'm not trying to sell the book though I do want to sell the book of course. Actually I want coaches to read it uh, is my major concern. Um, but I don't, I don't, uh, I think you need to, um, to study it more because it's just hard to explain it in a, a short period of time like we have. Um, it's more, I'm telling you things that I'd like you to uh, pursue uh, and, and in, uh, take it into yourself uh, and uh, study and, and work with it. To, to learn. Um, but I also mentioned to you that there was an adjustment. Now, I've never really talked to anybody about this and this, is, this adjustment is not in the book. So you're going to have to, uh, to, to uh, get it from here if you want to uh, use it. And uh, I just have to tell you and be honest and, and qualify my uh, uh, exposing, exposing it to you by the fact that uh, we used it and it was good for us but it doesn't, hasn't te stood the test of a long period of use like the other things that I talk about. Uh, I feel very confident of them because of uh, they've been tested uh, for a long period of time. What I'm going to talk to you today I, uh, doesn't have that, but yet it may be something that is helpful uh, to you. And this is not in the book. Um, I want to give you the background of it uh, quickly. When I was with Orlando, we played Miami on a Saturday afternoon. It was when they had, uh, was, I don't think it was the year they won the championship, but I think it was the next year. They had Shaq uh, and Wade. And Wade was young and very, very good. And uh, w we got hurt quite a bit with the um, pick and roll in the middle. Uh, I think we overreacted to it personally because when I, uh, when you visual see it on the visual, you, it looks worse than it is. But when you break it down statistically, I don't think they hurt us. Uh, that much. But anyway, we were very concerned. And on the ride back, uh, they had beaten us, not real bad, but definite. Uh, we were to play them again on Sunday night. And so, uh, as we were riding back, and just before we got off the plane, Johnny, the head coach, said to me, uh, let's meet in the office. And so we went up to the office. It was about 6.30 by that time when we got in. We spent another three, four hours uh, going over that thing. And we came up with something uh, that was a little bit unique and I think is, is still would be uh, unique. Um, and that is we called it train. What, what we did actually was not adjust the zone. We adjusted from the man to man to the rover zone. And uh, that took them especially the middle pick and roll, by halftime they didn't even run it anymore. Uh, it just took them right out of it. Uh, and uh, uh, so I'm going to show you those, that, that uh, movement, but we did put it in and see we couldn't practice because it was a back to back. We had the players come in early and you know Johnny and I were laughing about it. We were on national television. We'd never done this before. No one that we knew about had ever done it before. Uh, and we were going to expose it on national television when we didn't even have hardly any chance to practice it. We just said about 10 or 15 minutes that we had the players come early. Uh, and we told them and uh, showed them. And uh, surprisingly enough, uh, I guess it wasn't too surprising. They, they adjusted to it very quickly. Uh, they had no trouble. We had a call for it. We called it train. I'm a jazz guy and, and I had talked to Johnny, uh, let's call it train for John Coltrane. Because uh, nobody 
you know, if you, we were going to say fist and all of those things, that would take long for the players to figure out. But train was a, a term. But Johnny <laughs> didn't have, a, got a little cold feet on using a jazz term, so he turned it into like a, a regular train uh, when he talked to the players about it. Anyway, uh, we took him out of that play. And, uh, and we had a very good game, but they were very good. They beat us, but it was a very tight, uh, tight game. So what we did is, uh, I'll show you on the clipboard in just a few minutes here. Uh, we just started in a man. Uh, we figured out how we could get the players from the man to man to the zone. Uh, and uh, that's what we did. Uh, and we'll talk more about it. Uh, but first I'd like you to see uh, two samples of what we did. Because um, the, uh, we, we began to use it on other plays. And, and that worked out pretty good too. So let's take a look at the movement and then we'll come back and we can talk a little bit more about it. Uh, what we've been talking about and what we are talking about uh, in this adjustment from a man to man to a zone uh, is called train. I'm going to show you uh, on the clipboard here uh, the uh, the middle pick and roll, which is really how the train got started. Uh, but then we applied it in different ways. Uh, but this will give you an idea of uh, how it can be applied. Uh, this is just a typical middle pick and roll situation. Uh, the three man is down here. The four man is in this lane area. A two man over here. Putting both men in the corners. Uh, though Miami, when we played them, and the reason we use this, uh, did not. The man was more out in here, uh, which helped us uh, a little bit. But uh, on the dribble, and the screen is set up on the dribble, First of all, that is when the players uh, yell out the signal that they're going to adjust to a zone, to our rover zone. So one dribbles, X1 tries to force his way over the top, uh, and in time he may get over the top. Uh, that's okay. Uh, but as soon as the man comes off of that screen, X5, who's guarding five on the pick and roll, just steps out. He becomes the wingman. One then drops down into the middle. He becomes the rover. X3 uh, takes a baseline spot. Uh, X4 has a baseline spot. And uh, X5, of course, is, uh, as I said, is over here at the wing. So I'll show you how it looks after we've done this. Now, we have five still up here. He's probably going to roll, but it really doesn't make any difference now. Uh, we have our setup. If, if he should dribble over into here, X1 immediately uh, takes his position. A lot of people will be concerned about if we get a one man and X5 is in the area that he can drive. Well, that's what we got the rover for. The rover always uh, moves to that area as soon as the ball does. Uh, so he controls uh, the drive. Uh, so now we're in our setup. You see, we don't worry about anything outside of the initial move because we're back in zone. Now they have to make an adjustment. Either they could just keep attacking uh, with the play or uh, they re uh, recover into their zone offense if they have one. Uh, and this takes time. They don't have much time after, after that. Now we use this with um, other plays as we, we talk about. I'm going to show you one more just to show you how it's done. Uh, this was, this was uh, when um, 
the Nets with Jason Kidd, and they had a very good team, were running what they called the modify the Princeton offense. It was kind of a, I don't know if it was a, a generic Princeton or not, what. Uh, but as you remember, when they had this, a pass to the wing, the weak side guard cut off uh, of five. And uh, so the, the moves were very easy. Uh, the pass was made. We recognized that this was going to be uh, what they called their Princeton. They had a different name for it, Chin or something like that. Uh, we immediately now said train so that everybody knew we were going to adjust to our zone. So X2, instead of following, usually Jason, uh, he would just go to the wing. X5 would take Jason down here and move back into his regular uh, position on the baseline. X3 stepped in. X4 dropped back down in here. Uh, and one X1 became the rover. A lot of times when we were doing this adjustment, X1 ended up being the rover, mainly because he was usually guarding the guy with the ball, but but not always. Now, let's move down one more. We'll show you uh, how the <coughs> adjustment took place. Uh, we are now in our zone. <coughs> and one thing I didn't draw very well here is because I wanted to show you the setup you know, how we got into the setup uh, is that when this guy's got the ball, of course, X1 should be down here uh, in this in this position. Uh, now, with New Jersey, um, with Kid, you know, he used to rub off here and then go on the post up. And, of course, if we had a guard on him, he was so strong and such a good passer. But now he's got a postman on him. And that that created some real problems uh, for them. So that is the adjustment from a man-to-man -to, -man to our rover zone. You have to remember, we did not care about anything after that first cut, because now we were in the zone. So they had a lot of things they could do after this cut in that what they called Princeton. But we, it didn't affect us. Because now we were in a zone. Uh, so all we we were doing was taking away this play by playing zone on it. Uh, but we started in a man-to-man. -man, so they reckoned that that's what we were playing. Uh, and it took them a while to, to adjust to the fact we were playing a zone. Uh, so those are two. And we'll talk a little bit more about them. Well, there we showed you, you could see uh, how we made the adjustment. Uh, it actually looks more complicated uh, when you're drawing it than it is in actuality. Uh, but, you know, I have to qualify it again. This hasn't been proven over a long period of time. And maybe that's an advantage, you know, because if you see it all the time, you come up with ways. Uh, uh, but... Uh, you have to know their plays very well. Uh, and here's how we determined when we used it on any type of play. Uh, first of all, only important plays. Uh, the, the plays that they really require uh, to win. Uh, it's no sense going through all of this for unimportant plays. Uh, we want them to run those weak plays. We don't want them to run the good plays. Uh, so that was one thing that we always um, uh, made sure that uh, it took place. And then only when it's possible uh, to make those moves. It takes some time. You, you have to sit down and, and work with it. You just can't throw it out there. Uh, and uh, don't try it on plays you can't uh, easily make the adjustment. You'll just de defeat yourself. Uh, and, uh, and then the third thing, uh, we only wanted to do it on a few plays. I mean, there were times when we saw four or five good plays that we could have done it with. 
But we didn't want it to get to be, uh, uh, you know, chaos uh, out there. We wanted to stay, uh, we wanted to be able to do what we did very well rather than a lot of things that we did. So we only would use it on maybe one or two of their plays. Uh, and uh, basically what we were doing was making them believe that we were playing man to man and once they made their first initial cut, which with a lot of plays in the NBA especially and I think in all levels, that first p thrust is their best part of their play. Then after that we did not care what they did in that play because we were in a zone then. Uh, they had to adjust uh, to, uh, to the zone. Secret is, we chose the plays that we were going to do it. They didn't know which plays that it was going to be applied, if uh, at all. Now I will tell you, we, sh we saw New Jersey, uh, it was one of the plays that we, I showed you. The next time we played New Jersey, uh, about two weeks later, uh, we did not know whether we should continue to do this. We decided to do it to the same place. Well, as it turned out, New Jersey never ran that Princeton thing that they ran, the, the whole game. They came to, with a, prepared to run something else. Uh, and actually they won. But I, I don't think it was what they were doing, because it wasn't that good, I didn't think. Uh, we just did not play well offensively that night. We, had, uh, we were very uh, apathetic. Uh, and, uh, um, but uh, it showed us that they weren't going to try to work their stuff against what we did. They were going to change, and we felt that was to our advantage. Um, and the other thing you have to remember, and I had to remind Johnny a lot, is what, you, what we're doing is we're going to be playing more zone. Uh, you've got to be able to be confident of your zone uh, defense. Now, I don't profess that this, this particular thing for anybody. I just give it to you as maybe something that can help you. Uh, but I do think that you should do some real serious thinking about his own. I am impressed with this guy from Syracuse in the college ranks. I mean, he's taken a 2-1-2 two, two with his own, very simple. But he's made it a real masterpiece. Uh, but see, he's working on it like we, the other teams are working on their man-to-man. -man. Uh, and he's developed a nice system. Uh, he's tough to beat uh, with that zone. And he doesn't, he plays it the whole game. He has committed himself to it. Uh, and that's why I think it, uh, it is good. Well, I hope this helps. Uh, we'll be back again in a couple of days, uh, maybe in two days. Uh, and uh, I hope uh, your season's going good. And uh, we look forward to seeing you then. Uh, and, uh, have a good game. Thank you.